Tired of stable diffusion turning your multi-character masterpieces into a game of spot the identical twin? The struggle with inconsistent features and duplicate faces is real. But what if you could create two, three even more completely unique characters with rock-solid consistency? Imagine effortlessly posing them together, dressing them up, and dropping them into any scene you dream up. That's the power of IP Adapter in Comfy UI, and in this video, we're breaking down the entire process step by step. So, get ready to ditch the face swapping frustration and unleash your ultimate character designs. Before we start a quick favor, it's wild, but over 80% of you watching aren't subscribed yet. I'm dropping these comfy UI secrets every week, so hit that subscribe button and join the crew. Let's start building our workflow from scratch. First, we need to add a load checkpoint node and select our favorite checkpoint model. For this tutorial, I'll be using the Realistic Vision SDXL model. Next, let's connect our outputs with an Anything Everywhere 3 node. This will allow us to link outputs to inputs wirelessly. Now let's load our first IP adapter advanced node and the IP Adapter Unified Loader. I receive a lot of emails about errors when using IP Adapter, and most of them are caused by not downloading and placing the IP Adapter models in the correct folders. To avoid these issues, visit the IP Adapter GitHub page by Cubic. Scroll down to find the instructions and direct links for all the models. First, download the Clip Vision models and place them inside the Models folder, specifically in the Clip Vision folder. It's very important to rename the files exactly as specified on the IP Adapter GitHub page. Do this for both Clip Vision models. Next, download all the IP Adapter models. Inside the Models folder, Create a new folder called IP Adapter and save all the models there. The same goes for the Face ID models. Just follow the instructions on the page and you'll be good to go. So, back to our workflow. Let's connect our Unified Loader Node model and IP Adapter Outputs to the IP Adapter Advanced Node Inputs. Select the Plus Face Portrait model. We need to load a node called Load Image Batch from Deer. This node is part of the Inspire Pack Custom node, so make sure to install it from the manager. This node will allow us to connect a group of reference face images saved in a custom folder to the IP Adapter using only the path of that folder. For example, I'm creating a new folder named Model1 and placing all my target face reference images inside. Three different photos will work well and the face should be close to the camera. Copy the folder's path and paste it here. Then connect this node to the IP adapter's image input. Also change the weight to 0.6 because the plus model is very strong. That was the first IP adapter. Since we are creating two characters, we need a second IP adapter pass. Hold the control button, select all the nodes, copy them with control plus C, and paste the nodes using control plus shift plus V. Perfect. Now we need to chain connect the IP adapter models like this. Replace the path to our reference face images in the second IP adapter with the path to the model two folder. I haven't shown the images, but this folder contains a different AI character from the first one. Next, we need to set the attention masks. Load a new image. I have created masks that you can use if you want two or three characters. I'll leave these in the description below. Let's open the left two mask, which means we want IP adapter number one to work only on the area where our first model will be. Do the same for the second IP adapter but this time use a mask 
for the right area of the final output image. Let's connect our masks with the attention mask inputs in the IP adapters. Great. Now let's set our positive and negative prompts. For the positive prompt, specify that this is a portrait photo of two women. Then, describe the clothing and the environment. For the negative prompt, specify that you don't want any NSFW content, as this checkpoint model supports such features. Next, add an empty latent node to set our image dimensions. Since we want a landscape image, we'll use the supported SDXL dimension of 1216 by 832. Now we need a K-sampler. Connect the positive prompt, negative prompt, and empty latent node to the K-sampler. For the realistic vision lightning SDXL model, set the following settings. 10 steps. 1.8 CFG and DPM plus plus SDE Keras. Lastly, connect the output from our second IP adapter model to the K sampler. All we have left is to add a VAE decoder and a preview or save image node. Let's now run the workflow to see the result. Okay, good. We now have two characters in the image that are different from each other. However, for the second model, I used a reference face that is quite similar to the first one. I will change the path to a new folder with an AI character that has dark hair and completely different facial features. Let's run the workflow again. Cool. Now the AI characters are two distinct individuals, which is what we were aiming for. Let's change the seed number and generate a batch of four images to see other variations. We can see that the second character has dark hair without mentioning these details in the prompt. It was picked up from the second IP adapter reference image. Note that sometimes you'll get more than two characters, so make sure to change the seed number and try again until you get the best result you are aiming for. Now, let's say we want to add a new character. All we need to do is copy and paste a new IP adapter group of nodes. Chain connect it with the previous IP adapter and send the output to the K sampler. This time, we need to use the masks for three characters, left, middle, and right masks. Additionally, we need to update the positive prompt to specify that we want three women in the image. Now let's start generating a new image. Great. We got three characters, but they are not positioned correctly. Let's change the seed and keep trying. As you can see, we got four characters, which we don't want. Let's modify the prompt again, this time by putting the number three instead of writing out three, and maybe generate a batch of four images. Awesome! By generating a batch of four, we can see that we got some good variations with three AI characters, each with clearly different facial features and hair color. Now, we have not just one, but three consistent characters. By changing the background and clothing in the positive prompt, you can place all of them together in a new environment. A quick tip. If you want variation in clothing, avoid specifying the type of clothes. Instead, 
Use generic terms like wearing designer clothes or summer clothing in the positive prompt. This will give you different clothing styles and variations. This workflow is only the base of multiple AI characters, and you can improve it more with ControlNet and many other techniques to refine the faces even further. If you want me to do a second advanced part, leave a comment down below. An update concerning the beginner's course. I initially thought I could finish the course by the end of this month, but that estimation was off. I apologize for the delay. As I work solo on this course project and this YouTube channel, and also have a full-time job, it's been challenging. The good news is, I'm back and making progress. Creating a course suited for people with no prior experience with Stable Diffusion or Comfy UI is a bit challenging, so please be patient. I'll do my best to release it next month, but in the same time I'll always post new tutorials here in YouTube. Thank you for watching, smash that like button if you find this tutorial helpful, and if you're new to the channel, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on future Comfy UI workflows. See you in the next video.